And to straight talk, we seem to have very sensitive people in exactly the places we can't really afford them, in our Defence Department. The Sydney Morning Herald today says some staff there are upset the Defence Minister Peter Dutton banned them from holding events at work where they wore rainbow-coloured clothing for a woke cause. And the Herald says Defence employees spoke out about feeling immediate disappointment and shame and of being slightly disturbed, <laughs> slightly disturbed by the tone-deaf decision to stop the event celebrating the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, Intersexism and Transphobia, otherwise known as Ida Hobbit, which has got nothing to do with Lord of the Rings. I spoke a short while ago to Mark Latham, former federal Labor leader and now One Nation leader in the New South Wales Parliament. And I asked him, if Defence staff, who were saying they were slightly disturbed, <laughs> was really the big story that the Sydney Morning, Her Morning Herald thought. Well, not really. I, it's quite ridiculous that anyone would be joining the Defence Force to think that the mainstream frontline activity is to have a morning tea dressed in rainbow colours in celebration of Ida Hobbit Day, Ida Hobbit being another version of the left-wing gender fluidity sexuality alphabet. Uh, I don't know what uh, countries overseas and their Defence Forces would say about this. I suppose the Chinese would say, well, if someone's dressed in rainbow, they're probably easier to pick out and and uh, take out on the uh, battlefield. So uh, I'm sure uh, other defence forces in our region look at this uh, with amazement and uh, bewilderment as the Australian taxpayers would. We'd expect people join our defence forces to defend the nation, to do their day job, very, very important in terms of our national security. And why anyone wants to go to work to have seminars and events and celebrations about their sexu sexuality. I think, Andrew, the average Australian regards that as a private matter. Uh, left in the home. I don't know of any workplace where there's a big number of workers who want to do morning teas about their sexuality. Look, I, I can't quite get it either. I mean, if they're upset about, uh, you know, not being able to have a, uh, a little uh, morning tea in, in, in rainbow colours, heaven forfend uh, the, <laughs> how sensitive they'd be to yeah. some, some attack by China. They might have a complete meltdown. I don't know. Okay. Let me raise another issue that really staggered me. I, I was talking about it last night. Everyone now screaming that we've got to get rid of coal without actually proposing what's going to ever replace this thing. I mean, coal actually drives this economy. And it just seems to me we're in a, in a suicidal fit of madness. Now, the worst example is this. I find <laughs> I've reread it about six times. I still can't get over it. The Business Council telling the government to go net zero and its chief executive Jennifer Westacott saying this exercise, its report calling for net zero, was to show net zero could be done even if the requisite technologies had not all been developed. <laughs> even if the requisite technologies had not been developed, it still can be done. I mean, what kind of, if wishes were fishes, is this? Well, anything can be done if we go sit in a cave with no electricity and no modern appliances and no modern conveniences. Uh, anything's possible if you really want to destroy the Australian economy and lifestyle. But the recklessness, Andrew, the recklessness of a so-called business leader saying you don't actually need the proven technologies, well, if some of these just fall away and they're useless and hopeless and a complete waste of gov government and private sector money, oh, we can still plough on. I mean, this is the recklessness of uh, betting the future of the Australian economy on technological miracles, uh, things that are not yet uh, proven in the world of science, certainly not proven in terms of their commercial viability for the long term. You're talking about powering up the Australian economy. And whether you're talking about hydrogen or the, 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 the enormous amount of money we've already wasted on carbon capture and storage, uh, whether you're talking about uh, battery storage uh, or whether you're talking about pumped hydro, uh, if they're not proven, you can't run the risk of going down that path when every single job in Australia is on the line. You know, if, I, if it came from Greta Thunberg, I'd say, all right, she's only a kid. But this is the business council saying, listen, we'll, f we'll power the economy with stuff we don't know, actually know will work yet. I mean, this is nuts. We've already been told, you know, a wave generator will be the new technology. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> Geothermal, Tim Flannery was flogging that. Well, that project in Inaminka completely flopped. Carbon capture, as you say, 
where, where where's that working like we need it to? I mean, it's just nuts. And oh, no I, can you understand what's going on in this country, mate? Well, to some extent, the Morrison government has brought this upon itself because they've embraced the idea of technological solutions, vague, untested, nebulous into the future. Uh, they've embraced it, so they bring this madness further upon themselves. But what other part of the economy, Andrew, do we rely on technological hypotheticals to say, let's make a big change? I feel I'm living in a madhouse, to be honest, the, the way the uh, discussion about our energy supplies are going.